I'm Beecher Wiggins. I'm Director for Acquisitions and Bibliographic Access here at the Library of Congress. Uh, today is another one of our Elsie's Digital Future and You series, and we are talking to you again about BibFrame. We want to keep BibFrame front and center. Um, when we were determining the title of the session, which I see has changed on me again, um, some of my colleagues thought saying BibFrame goes international was a bit too forward thinking, if not pompous. And I said that we need to be proud of what we're doing and show that BibFrame is indeed penetrating beyond the domestic borders of the US. So we should tout what we're doing and pump our sh uh, chests out. So we're pumping our chests out this morning and I'll leave it up to you at the end of today's session whether you think our title is overly ambitious or not. Even, and I think we can say global and international are synonymous. So either way, you decide at the end of the session. And I say that we, with full acknowledgement that uh, most of the work, if not all of the work, is being done by the staff in the Network Development and Bond Standards Office and in the Cooperative and Instructional Programs Division. They are making it happen, and I simply point fingers from time to time to try to keep us on track. But it's been a good journey thus far, and we want to share with you what we are learning about what's going on in the world. As I travel to conferences and programs, I am constantly bombarded with the interest in BibFrame and in linked data, BibFrame in particular because the Library of Congress is leading that, and that is likely to be the way the library community moves into linked data. Um, so you'll hear about the international aspects from my colleagues today, and we'll let each of us introduce ourselves as we present to you. I understand there'll be some interesting points that um, you'll have to take away. So with that, um, I'll turn it over to our colleagues, and I believe, Judy, you lead off, Sally leads off. No, they're pointing at each other. <laughs> Now we think it's Sally. it's Sally. Sally McCallum will lead off, and she will tell you who she is in case you don't know. I doubt there are many of you who do not. Sally. OK. I'm Sally McCallum, and I'm chief of the network development and Mark standards office here at the library. And um, so I'm going to talk about uh, what we're, what's going on in Europe with respect to BibFrame and some very, very interesting developments. Um, if when we first initiated the project uh, back in 2012, uh, we always had international participation. We had, uh, we had representatives from Germany and the United Kingdom on a very small working group that we had to, to plan the project. Uh, in fact, it was that, that small working group that named the project BibFrame. And so they have been there from the very beginning. We also had a liaison through Denmark to some other groups within Europe that we didn't know very much about the groups, but they were very interested in having uh, information coming to them. Then when Elsie started the BibFrame updates at each, at each ALA the next year, we've always had uh, someone from Europe uh, to give a talk, uh, give a presentation, tell what they were doing, tell what was going on in Europe at each one of those. So then in 2017, uh, Leif Anderson, Anderson, who is at the uh, Royal Danish Library, uh, organized a European workshop. He got much more ambitious with respect to uh, having uh, uh, cooperation and collaboration within Europe. He wanted people to be able to share their implementation experience because they, they have their various meetings that are focused on different topics uh, in, within Europe, but they didn't have anything that was focused on BibFrame and what I'm doing, what you're doing, what uh, different ones were doing. Uh, it would bring together people who were working on the transition from MARC to linked data using the BibFrame model, and that's what he wanted to do. And I, I, I'm, I, several places here I have quotes, and it's because I quoted someone from Europe who was saying those things. And that was, this was a quote from Reinhold Hugelman from the uh, um, 
German National Library who uh, made this summary of what uh, the workshop was to do. So in September of 2017, we had the first workshop at the German, it took place at the German National Library. There were 40 participants. I must admit I was surprised that there were so many from 16 European countries. Uh, and um, uh, the, one of the, for them, one of the big outcomes, a lot of people said, I can't build something new. I need to be able to buy it. I need to be able to get it from a vendor. And so one thing that the workshop decided to do was, okay, what are the questions that these libraries should be asking the vendors if they are trying to get pieces or parts of a BIM frame, BIM frame implementation for their library? Uh, the, um, the document, which is online, that, that one could use for doing, uh, doing a vendor solicitation, uh, is called BIM frame expectations for ILS vendors. And it starts out with a very simple, I just want to get, put some URIs in my MARC data so that it'll be linkable. Uh, it goes on to, I want to convert my database. Uh, and then I want to not just convert it, but I also want to input native bib frame into an editor of some sort. Because so you can do each one of these without the other uh, to a certain extent. And then I want fully linked data. I want that data to be not just in the bib frame vocabulary, but I want the links to be in there. And then exploring discovery. By then you could explore discovery and share records because everybody was used in the market, the huge MARC environment, they share records uh, a lot and they needed to be able to do that again. Uh, and a decision was made that this was useful and let's have one the next year. So. In t September of 2018, uh, we had the second European Bib Frame Workshop. It was held in Florence, Italy, uh, at the uh, European International University uh, campus, uh, on their campus. And it was sponsored by Castellini Libri and the university. And at, at you all, many of you will know, of course, Castellini's name because they are one of our large uh, book suppliers and cataloging suppliers. Um, and they also have a very large bib frame project, which I'll get to a little bit later. Uh, there, there that, for that meeting, there were 70 participants from 17 countries, plus some North, several, about 10, I think, people came from North America, and someone came from Qatar. Um, and the U.S. initiatives that, that involve linked data and bib frame that were presented there are own. Uh, the uh, LD4 project from st that Stanford run, um, chairs or, or uh, uh, is the leader for, and the PCC uh, activities are going on in the PCC with respect to linked data. Uh, we, we heard a lot of discussion. We had talks, tutorials, uh, lightning talks, uh, discussion group and breakouts, and, and I want to talk a little bit or give you a little bit of uh, a glimpse of a few people who are doing either production or are looking at things or are evaluating at this point or experimenting still or building and sharing. And so I will do that in some of the next slides. But first of all, this is the group and it was, uh, it was the part, the buildings from the university that were used is a, an old Medici palace that they've turned into a conference center. And it's a very well outfitted conference center and we had lots uh, of very good uh, facilities for the conference. And this is the group. And this is the, um, uh, this, as you can see, good, good facilities. He had, a, he had a huge screen. We could all sit and face each other. We weren't uh, classroom style. Uh, and it, it really worked very well in that conference center. We had also had very good facilities, I must say, in Frankfurt the year before. <laughs> Excellent. So here's a glimpse of what we heard at this conference. I'm just going to talk about four or five of the, of the uh, um, papers or, or discussions that we had. First is uh, Sweden. Sweden was in production. This was September of 2018. In June of 2018, Sweden converted its, its main union catalog into bib a bib frame uh, 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 database. And uh, they have, in, in Sweden, they have a union catalog that, that catalogers 
catalog into, and then the records are sent back to the local systems where they can be uh, given or displayed to the users. However, that university or that uh, uh, public library or whatever, however they, they think their users will respond to it. So it, it sort of separates, you, you, can, you can build it centrally, but then you can have the, you can display and serve your users as you, as who you know and not everybody would know and they're not all alike. Uh, they have the, the they call it the Libris XL, and I frankly don't remember if they told us what XL meant. I don't know if it's 40 or extra large <laughs> or, <laughs> or, or a pop group, but any of them could be interesting. Uh, 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 or maybe something Swedish, I don't know. Uh, at any rate, they, want, they wanted to improve coordination. Uh, they wanted to improve reuse of information and they wanted to enhance the user experience through having more links. Those were some of the motivations for them. Uh, they, as I said, they collaboratively edit in the union catalog and then they take the records to their uh, local system to, in, for the user experience. Uh, but some of the expectations and it, some of the ones that we are also very interested in, they wanted to find out what in MARC they depend on. What is it that's in MARC that's essential that we bring forward to, into, the, into this environment? They wanted an easier maintenance, and that's part, of the, uh, uh, that's part of what everyone expects to get from the linked data aspect of BibFrame, is easier maintenance. That when, when something, a heading is changed, it doesn't have to be changed in a lot of records. It is changed immediately in whatever, when anybody retrieves a bibliographic record that contains that. Uh, that heading. Uh, they wanted to uh, phase out redundant details, and that is something we would all like to be able to do because Mark uh, is very um, crusty at this point. It was it was uh, developed under when cataloging, cataloging rules said one thing, and then new cataloging rules said something slightly different. So slightly different uh, 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 ways of saying the same thing were shoved into the format. And so they, want to, they wanted to, to bring all this sort of redundancy that's, that's all over the place in the format together and get rid of it. And we have that same motivation. And they wanted to increase derivation. They wanted to, uh, to be able to derive by using works and instances as in the BitFrame model, they wanted to be able to leave a work as it is, and just attach a new instance, attach a new instance uh, to it. Um, some choice comments from the person who, who um, uh, presented for them were, it's working, it, it, working versus perfect. They realized into their project when they had, they, I think they were about six months late coming up, which is not bad. Uh, they said, it's working, it's not perfect, but let's go on with it. Uh, and then they, they, uh, he also said, not done, just real. And he, he, uh, we can all sympathize with that, that, they, that it will never be quite finished, but it is real, and, and as of June 2018, it was real. In Hungary, uh, they've been looking and evaluating. Uh, the Hungarian uh, National Library has, they've carried out projects, experiments in the past few years because they're, they were getting ready to get a new ILS and they wanted to be able to go forward with the new ILS. But so when they, they'd been looking at um, various vocabularies, uh, Bebo, um, uh, schema, various vocabularies that they might use for their bibliographic data. But when BibFrame came out, they said, well, this one offers us an opportunity to have a vocabulary that is really tuned to our, our data, to our bibliographic data. And so they were quite pleased to be able to, to, to turn their attention to looking and evaluating uh, BibFrame. Uh, some of their questions, though, that, and I'm taking these from the slides that they presented, uh, were, uh, is BibFrame well known enough yet? They didn't want to put put all their eggs in a basket that wasn't going to be 
wasn't going to have longevity. Uh, is there a critical quantity of data using BibFrame to spawn tools? We're, all, we're very used to, in the MARC environment, where, which is huge, uh, of uh, many uh, programmers and uh, uh, companies, various ones, have developed tools for us. And until there's a lot of data, you're not going to get that tool development. So they were concerned that, that is there enough data that we don't have to go do, invent everything ourselves, but we can, we will get tools the way we have had in the MARC environment. Finland is experimenting with, uh, with BibFrame. Uh, they convert the MARC data to BibFrame, and then they convert it to schema.org, uh, which is the, uh, uh, the schema that's the, the schema child that was invented by Google, uh, Yahoo, Microsoft. I don't know if Yandex was in there initially, but they are one of the developers now. And it's for selling products but it's adaptable to bibliographic data. And some people have done a lot of work at trying to adapt it to bibliographic data. But it doesn't accommodate all the data that libraries need, and everybody recognized that. However, it, because it, it's um, known and used by Google and Yahoo and Microsoft, it, it, it makes a, a good channel for being able to get your data out there. Uh, so a quote from... Uh, Asma Suman, Sumanen <laughs> uh, from uh, the uh, Finnish National Library. It is useful to go via BibFrame, but for our current use cases and experiments, schema.org seems like a better fit. And so that's what they have been doing, and we, we don't see anything wrong with that. That's, that is, what we want is to see more and more experimentation going on in the environment rather than less. Uh, rather than everyone saying, we've got it now, we can stop. And then there's the big Italian project. Now, we had a, uh, a talk from, the, from Tiziana uh, and uh, Michele uh, from the Casolini uh, operation, uh, I think it was about a year ago, and uh, they <coughs> shared again what they're doing. Uh, they're converting thousands of records into BibFrame and make, uh, building a huge database, and then they, then they give the records back to the library, BibFrame, a BibFrame database of records, back to the library uh, that, to, that, can, that sent them to them. Uh, and it, it's, um, it's, it's called Share BDE, is what, how we refer to it in the US. Uh, but the, uh, it, it focuses on the creation of experimental linked data discovery environment, which is what they have, which is this huge environment, as well as the enriched data that they can then send back to the libraries that have the data that has links in them. It's, uh, as I say, a very large database, and it, uh, and it is uh, it's a catalyst for the library, when they get their database back, to then go on experimenting and, and uh, doing things, new things with this data. So, in summary, and I, I this summary is in the words of one of the Europeans that attended the, uh, uh, the conference, uh, which uh, rather than what I thought was, came out of it, uh, Reinhold Huvelman from the uh, German National Library, uh, he first quoted Life Anderson, uh, nothing fits everything, which was um, uh, is apparent. Uh, but then he talked about the expansion of the community, that from the first meeting to the second meeting, there was an expanded community. There were many more people doing something and interested, and uh, we, that came out particularly in the little breakout sessions where people talked a lot rather than having someone talking at them. Um, people are at different stages, and I think I, I hope I've indicated that from production to looking at something, to experimenting, to uh, uh, building, and so on. Uh, people are going from experiments to production now, uh, which Sweden demonstrated. Uh, there are a variety of approaches, as, you, as the ones I picked out to say something about, like Finland has a very different approach from what Sweden is doing. Uh, there's a, he, th he felt that a critical mass had been reached, that there, were a, there was a lot of data beginning to be uh, uh, generated, and 
out there and that uh, people could safely go in, start doing their work, in, doing projects aimed at Bibframe. Uh, and, but that communication and cooperation were going to be essential if we were going to go forward uh, in a manner that would make us able to share in the long run. We don't want everyone to go forward uh, in, different, in a different direction, which is a little bit of what we have right now as people experiment. Uh, Jody Williamson and I both went to the conference and we uh, gave a number of presentations uh, based on our work, at LC's work, and uh, some of, the, of you who are in the cataloging directorate, your work. Uh, and, uh, but we were impressed. We were very impressed by what we saw and heard. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It's great to see so many people here interested in Bib Frame. Um, I'm Judith Cannon, Chief of the Cooperative and Instructional Programs Division, and I'm going to be talking to you about the cohort. And a lot of people have asked me, what is the cohort? And it's sometimes known as the PCC cohort, um, and that's the Program for Cooperative Cataloging. But before I actually talk to you about the cohort, I need to give you some information that led to this. In January 2014, Paul Frank and I managed to get hold of the BibFrame editor from the Network Development and Mark Standards Office. And we were extremely excited. And Paul came rushing to me and said, I've, I've got the editor. And I said, OK, forget the conference. I'll stand in for all the program for cooperative cataloging meetings. You go back to the hotel and see if you can pull a PowerPoint together on this editor. And um, let me assure you, those of you in this room that have been around a long time and saw that initial editor, it was extremely primitive. But um, together, the two of us pulled together a PowerPoint presentation, which we delivered twice at the LC booth at midwinter 2014, and it was a smash hit. It was really a sensation. So we, that really started things moving. And by 2014 annual conference, um, ALA annual conference, a lot of people were talking about BibFrame. And um, one of them was a very enthusiastic supporter, and that was Phil Skur from Stanford. And Phil made up his mind that he was going to get a Mellon grant to advance this. And by May 2016, he had this grant, but, and there were only a few libraries that came in with him to do this. There was Columbia, Cornell, Harvard, the Library of Congress, Princeton, and Stanford. And um, they were working primarily on linked data, or linked open data, known as LOD also. And during this experiment, they focused primarily on ontologies. So um, it, was, it was a very limited scope. When the grant, as the grant was coming to an end, Phil realized that he hadn't achieved nearly what he wanted to achieve, so he sought a second grant from Mellon. And um, Mellon gave him a second grant on June 2018. Now, this is a two-year grant, and um, in order to pull this grant off, he worked with Cornell, Harvard, and somebody from the University of Iowa. But when he got the grant, Mellon had some requirements, and there are seven goals that Mellon had in mind, and I'm not going to go through all of them, but I've given you a link to them. But um, what I do want to say is that Mellon recognized that if this was going to be a success, there had to be a much broader audience. And they told them that they wanted them to do this. Now, in order to get a broader audience, people have to have somewhere to work. And this is one of the things that they don't have at the moment. They have nowhere to really experiment with BibFrame. We at the Library of Congress do. 
we've got the BibFrame database, but the world out there um, didn't really have anything to play around in. Um, the goals that Mellon enumerated are very important for the Library of Congress because we at the Library of Congress have not had an opportunity to build a build frame database with multiple institutions. But a sandbox will make this possible because the multiple institutions will be able to add their build frame data. Sharing build frame data needs to be tested in order to advance build frame. And I think that Sally made this very clear that we have to experiment and we have to try different things out. Second, our focus has been on developing the editor and we've done very little about how this is going to impact discovery. We need to know how the end user is going to interact with this linked open data. And, but we can't advance BibFrame if we don't know what the discovery layer is going to look like. So um, we're now in linked data for production, um, LD4P2. Um, sorry. So the first thing that they're going to do is expand the involvement. And the, the need, the, the grant has said that they're to build a sandbox, which is what they wanted, which is a place for them, for people to experiment in, to save their data, to look at other records. And so this is what LD4P2 will do. And they invited PCC members to, to pro submit proposals where they could be selected to participate in the grant and work in the sandbox. And they had expected not many proposals, but they got far more than they expected. So they had to go through those proposals and winnow them down to 17. And the 17 were selected based on the collections that they were going to put into the database and also on their willingness to adhere to the goals of um, the Mellon Grant. Now, it's, these 17 institutions are going to be working in something called Sinopia. Stanford had to build a database, and they're, they're building one right now. It's nearly complete, and it's called Sinopia. And this is where these um, people that are part of the cohort will be working. They'll be working in the Sinopia um, database system that's housed and managed by Stanford University. Now, Sinopia is using the BibFrame ontology, but their editor looks somewhat different from our editor. In fact, actually, it looks quite different. But the ontology will be the BibFrame ontology and they have looked at our bid frame editor and they've made modifications to our bid frame editor. They've also been working with us on the bid, fail, bid frame profile editor. Because as you know, you, you have a variety of templates that you work in when you're doing your bid frame work. And that's what they've got to do is create these templates that the cohort members can use. So the cohort, it's the 17 institutions that are participating in the grant and they're all programmed for co cooperative cataloging institutions. The Sinopia um, bib frame editor, well I should, we can call it that or the Sinopia editor, whichever one you want, focuses on cataloging and it's been designed specifically for catalogers and for catalogers to use. They'll be submitting their data using the BibFrame editor. And the, their, their metadata that they submit will be saved into the Sinopia database. And they'll be able to recall it and edit it. And 
as they go through this um, participation, they have to follow their proposals and they have to adhere to what they agreed to that relates to the um, grant that Mellon gave them. I don't know if this was a moment of weakness or a moment of strength, but um, LC agreed to provide the initial training for the 17 cohort members. And um, this task has fallen to Paul Frank, Les Hawkins, and Jody Williamson. And you can see here on this slide what they've done. But I think the thing that's probably going to interest a lot of you in this room, m most of all, is the fact that we have to create a bib frame manual. And that bib frame manual will be an LC bib frame manual. It, it will be the product that many of you in this room are using. And um, we've got two new senior instructors in the Cooperative and Instructional Programs Division, and one of their first assignments, um, a little trepidation here, because um, one has been here two weeks, one arrived yesterday, um, <laughs> is going to be helping to pull this manual together. So they're taking a crash course, and they're in here today to learn a little bit more about bib frame. Um, so anyway, this manual will be used by the Library of Congress. And we have let those um, PCC institutions that are part of the cohort know that we're going to provide this manual, and it will be out there for global use, but it, that it will focus on LC bid frame, not the Sinopia. However, in a spirit of generosity, and also out of curiosity too, um, we are going to provide the initial training to those 17 institutions on the, the Sinopia editor, because we feel that it's very important that we know what they're using and, and what kind of templates they're creating. So um, Paul Frank and Les Hawkins have agreed that they can undertake this. Um, here I do want to say something that I think we often forget as we're moving forward, the bib frame when it was initially designed was not designed just for catalogers. When the Library of Congress undertook this, it, it had a much broader scope in mind. Um, but lately we've been focusing more on catalogers. But the way it was designed was that it could take all kinds of information. Um, and so I've got something here that I ran by people that I'd like to read to you. Sinopia focuses on cataloging, whereas LC designed BibFrame with the express purpose of providing a foundation for the future of bibliographic description, both on the web and in the broader networked world that is grounded in linked data techniques. So beyond the cohort, what I do want to tell you is that the, the, the manual that we're preparing will be used to explode the pilot participants pilot participants from 48 to 100 by September 2019. But once Paul and Les have given the training to the PCC cohort on the Sinopia editor, we're bowing out of any kind of training for the cohort. The cohort will be on its own and they will be expected to support the rest of the community that can come in and work in that sandbox, which is so critical to the development of BibFrame. So it's now over to um, Paul and Jody to explain to you the shared VDE. So I'm Jody Williamson from the Network Development and Mark Standards Office. And I'm Paul Frank from the uh, Cooperative and Instructional Programs Division. And our portion of the 
presentation is about share VDE, so we're going to share the presentation. <laughs> and, um, but I want to start by saying I want to thank my predecessors who just spoke because Sally McCallum mentioned the um, European Bid Frame uh, workshop where they talked about needs and particularly things they were going to ask ILS vendors to help them with. And two of those needs towards the bottom of the list were discovery or discovery and shareability. And then Judith also mentioned that same thing. So we're very excited to present this part of the Bid Frame presentation because Casalini has actually been developing that discovery layer. Most bid frame work up to this point has focused on being able to take MARC data and convert it to bid frame, to take bid frame data, convert it to MARC, to actually input bibliographic descriptions that are shareable as linked data. What hasn't been really explored too much is how users will deal with what we've done as cats. I'm speaking to you as a group of catalogers. H how, how will the work that we do as catalogers be used by the public in a shared environment? And that's what Castellini has done a great job in, in, um, in, in starting that move. So the Share VDE project started in late 2016, early 2017. Um, it's a group, it's Castellini Libri, which is the uh, Florence-based Italian um, book supplier and cataloger. They have a large contract, I believe, with the library. And Atcult is an Italian-based data processing company. They also have a small uh, ILS system. And it was a library-driven, vendor-supported initiative to really bring linked data forward. The interesting thing about it is that it really started out with data conversion and then moved very quickly into discovery. The, they have had three different phases of their development, and the first two were really about data conversion, and now the most recent one is focusing on the discovery. And to guide these developments, they have started a user council, which has about 21 member libraries and community experts. There are, is a lot of overlap between the institutions that are involved in shared VDE and the institutions in the LD4P cohort. The Transformation Council was started fairly recently to address some of the data conversion issues that have come up as the libraries have been, have been evaluating the data that uh, Casolini and AtCult converted. And they've made a lot of recommendations uh, for testing and changes. And this work continues. Uh, there are members from the library that are part of these councils so that our work is more aligned with what Casolini is doing. I want to um, talk a little bit now about this shared environment. By the way, um, VDE and Share VDE is virtual discovery environment. But um, as LC staff members, um, imagine that you're working in the cataloging module. Maybe you're working um, in the OPAC, the LC OPAC. You're dealing with resources from one institution. It's pretty straightforward. It's the, one of the largest institutions in the world. But still, you're dealing with data from one institution. But now I want you to think about a situation where you're working in a shared environment with data from multiple institutions. This is the future, but this is something that needs to be dealt with now and is being dealt with by the Share VDE project. As Judith mentioned, and I think Sally alluded to it as well, the um, Share VDE is, is collecting MARC data from multiple institutions and returning that data to the users in, in BibFrame. But they're also taking that data, reconciling it, deduping it, providing an extra discovery layer, and doing all sorts of data manipulations on a super big data level that even the Library of Congress does not have to deal with yet. So, so they've, they've taken a step forward in this, in this shared environment. And that the test case actually for this are the, the cohorts that Judith mentioned, the uh, institutions participating in, in the LD4P2 cohort group. So, so those um, institutions are giving their data to Casolini to share VDE. Share VDE is generating consistent identifiers for entities and works across all the collections. So um, 
we'll look at an example of Moby Dick in a second. We maybe have multiple copies and editions of Moby Dick, but probably Stanford and other institutions have additional ones that we might not have and have some of the ones that we have. So those either need to be deduped or identified as unique. And then um, there will be an ongoing exchange between the LD4P2 um, participants or the, and the cohorts as well with Castellini and Ed Cult on the data transformation and the creation of work identifiers. You notice that work shows up twice on this slide. This is a real critical part of the process, identifying works. But this was the first step of the data conversion, which was taking the MARC data and first uh, assigning the identifiers and the URIs that you see in subfield zero. And then it was converted to bib frame. And so a lot of additional data is added in, uh, just getting the URI in means that the library can take the MARC data back, put it in their own local systems, and they have the URI. And it, having the URIs really does facilitate the conversion to bib frame. In addition to all of the work they're doing, just to put the URIs in, um, the Share VDE project is doing a lot of um, enrichment outside just our um, id.loc.gov database. They're doing a lot of analysis to reconcile different entities to figure out that Herman Melville with the birth and death dates is probably the same as Herman Melville who wrote Moby Dick, but the authorized heading doesn't have the birth and death dates. And they have a lot of um, proprietary software that they have developed to reconcile entities and store them and reuse them as they analyze different libraries' data. And the biggest thing they're, they're working on is uh, what Tiziana calls the clusterization process, so that there's like a constellation of data revolving around um, set works and set um, authors and publisher entities, I believe, also. And they're also, as they evaluate and convert more data, then they're looking, do they need to create additional clusters? Does this incoming data match an existing cluster and so on? And this is an example of their uh, discovery interface for Antonio Vivaldi. On the left side, you can see that they have links out to multiple sources, including our id.loc.gov and Wikidata and the Bibliothèque Nationale de France and VIA. They've also pulled in a bit of a Wikipedia description. On the right, they have variants. It's hard to read. <laughs> and other links. And then there's the line going down the middle to works, and then under that is where the works are clustered. Isn't that right, Paul? Yeah, yeah. Right. And right. now here's our Moby Dick example. Right, and, and the, um, the, the previous page, so uh, I have to go back. Oh. <laughs> I just want, I mean, is this the OPAC of the future? I mean, this doesn't look like any OPACs that I know right now, but this looks more to me like a Google search on something where you get the pane on the right-hand side with the blurb of data. It generally comes from Wikidata, right? But, but you, can, you get that constellation effect in a Google search or in an internet search. Well, the, the sheer VDE discovery layer is sort of mimicking that, that discovery that you might find through Google, right? So this is Vivaldi with, um, reconciled authority data about um, Vivaldi links to additional information. That's part of the linked data, right? Linking out to other, other parts. But then as Jody um, went on to say that that line down the center goes to what catalogers probably would be most interested in. And that's the, the list of works here. So um, I don't think it's gonna take any of you very long to identify, hey, maybe there's some on this list that should be deduped, right? This is part of the process. So I, I saw some duplicated data here, um, but that's that's the task that Castellini and ShareVD has taken on to reconcile all of this data that's coming from multiple sources. And so then here we have a search for Moby Dick, and the there's a title that's highlighted about halfway down, and then this is the display just for Moby Dick. So it's the works with additional links out to instances, uh, cross or variants on the right, subject headings below that, 
And then this is how the individual record displays. And at the very bottom is the permalink back to our catalog. So this is our data that Castellini and Atkult converted last year. Anything else to say? Yeah, so, um, well, that, that's actually the last slide for us in our presentation, but um, I do want to say, looking to the future, so um, the Castellini um, firm has been looking at a future discovery layer. This is the one they have now that's used, but they're, they're looking to the future. And um, there's been some very good discussions of this. And um, what one of the, I'm just going to leave you with one thought that I thought that I find very interesting. And that's that in the future, maybe there won't be that distinction between a traditional library OPAC and a traditional library cataloging module. We work in a cataloging module. That data goes to an OPAC. The prototype that Casolini is looking at is maybe having that one layer be both for cataloging and for discovery, so all work would be done in a layer like that. And I find that very um, exciting. We'll see how it pans out, but it's a, it would be a big change from the way we do things now, but it's in line with all the other changes in our environment. So thank you very much. Hello, I'm Les Hawkins. I work in the Cooperative and Instructional Programs Division with my colleague uh, Paul Frank and Judith. Um, I'm a concert coordinator. I'm gonna talk a little bit about some activities and developments having to do with linked data, semantic web, and bib frame in uh, China, Australia, and New Zealand. And as uh, Sally pointed out when she was talking about the um, European bib frame workshop, it's true here that the, universities and government agencies in this part of the world um, are in different stages, uh, from experimentation um, to just preparing data, adding URIs to their data, uh, developing uh, 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 vocabularies that are linked data friendly. So that's kind of a common theme, I think. The other thing is that uh, they're also working with vendors and their systems to be able to uh, provide some of the experimentation with BibFrame and some of the data conversion. So uh, some examples uh, from China. Recently, in the, in the beginning of March of this year, um, there was a seminar held um, uh, called Linked Data and the Semantic Web at uh, Hong Kong Baptist University. And uh, it was a, a conference that attracted people from the US. Phil Skur uh, from Stanford attended to talk about the um, LD4P2 uh, project and to give uh, talk about moving towards linked data and kind of the challenges and uh, you know, the rewards for, for looking at that and the risks involved with that and the, the payoffs. Um, some other uh, libraries uh, sending representatives um, were Shanghai Library System, which was talking about its efforts to publish uh, library data as open linked data. And the last example that I have here, I, I thought was very interesting from Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, um, the person who presented at this conference and in several other conferences in, in China was Ki Tat Lam talking about their uh, bibliographic linked data learning platform. And, um, and I'm gonna show you a few slides from that, but the, the link up here is uh, to uh, uh, an open access uh, presentation it's given at a different concert. Um, <laughs> a different conference at um, Beijing University, but it's uh, freely available there and it describes their project. Um, and let's look at some of what they've created. They worked with um, their vendor to convert a portion of their library catalog to BibFrame 2.0. Um, they've set up uh, this platform from this page. There's the URL, you can play with it, it's freely available. But this is intended to let you compare um, linked data formats. You can put in a, a comparison of BibFrame, um, RDA and RDF format, and uh, the MARC XML format, kind of compare um, uh, the formats. Uh, this, also, this page also gives you um, an access to doing a Sparkle uh, endpoint query for the BibFrame data that's been converted from their library. 
and then they've also experimented with um, searching their database um, and to pull up uh, data using uh, uh, knowledge cards, the Wikidata knowledge cards. And I'll show you some slides from, from that. This is just the page where you can compare the different formats, do a, do a search on, um, a re for a resource, and then compare it looking at the BibFrame format, um, RDA, RDF, um, JSON, LD, and you could look at the Marks XML format. This is a learning platform, so it is intended for librarians to kind of get familiar with these formats um, and see some differences. This is the Sparkle query form, and this um, will um, search against their um, BibFrame triple store. Then this is the, the um, searching the, their database um, with knowledge cards. And so the knowledge cards are that wiki data that you'll see if, if you do a Google search, um, you'll see on the right hand side, you'll see a, a little box there with some information. That's what this data is. Uh, it's pulled from wiki data and it matches data in the, uh, the library's big frame triple store. And so you get a display and you can kind of um, navigate your, your search through these knowledge cards. In uh, looking at Australia and New Zealand, uh, relied on some contacts that Judith Cannon and Paul Frank had uh, in these countries. Um, and I would say both, both countries here are kind of in a stage where they're monitoring developments. And in fact, there are people from universities and government agencies in both of these countries that have been following BibFrame for quite a long time from its beginnings. And they've um, you know, participated in regional and international and vendor conferences and they're part of the world uh, for a number of years. Um, but I think it's fair to say that they, representatives from both universities and government agencies are kind of in a monitoring and watching and a data preparation phase. So we have an example here from the Australian government um, they formed a linked data working group, uh, which is kind of a clearinghouse of, um, of information for libraries that are interested in publishing their data uh, as linked data. Uh, they also provide some learning resources there. National Library of Australia, um, as the cataloging agency for their country, has been monitoring BibFrame 2.0, particularly in terms of how it may be uh, you know, how their data, their marked data may be converted to BibFrame 2.0. And there, these are only a couple of university libraries from Australia, but these are the ones we had some contacts with. Uh, and they very much are in a, in a monitoring kind of mode and working with their data, adding URIs to their authority data. They're kind of in a preparation mode and, and monitoring. Um, mentioned a couple of conferences, international conferences, uh, regional conferences, and uh, vendor conferences are important for um, both of these countries, uh, people, practitioners in both of these countries to communicate with one another, uh, give updates on, on their developments and, and to learn. Here's a couple of conferences. The Australian Library and Information Association is an annual conference and throughout the past several years I've found uh, there have been BibFrame presentations, there have been linked data presentations. It's an ongoing um, theme of that conference. Uh, the International Conference, the Association for Information Science and Technology, located here in Silver Spring, Maryland, their headquarters actually. But they're, they're gonna be holding a, um, their conference in Melbourne uh, later in this year, um, October uh, 2019, and we understand that there will be uh, some invited papers uh, involving linked data and, and BibFrame. So I mentioned, uh, let's go, moving on to New Zealand, I mentioned the, that the vendor conferences are very important and one of those for both New Zealand and Australia is the uh, uh, Australia New Zealand Regional Ex Libris Group, um, ANSREG. And um, this has been a forum for several years for people to communicate about linked data. Um, in 2020 it'll be held their conference will be held in New Zealand, and we understand that some of the invited papers will be uh, covering bid frame. And uh, the last example uh, bullet that I have here, National Library of New Zealand, um, they've told us that they are in the mode of monitoring bid frame developments. They're preparing their data, adding URIs to uh, their authority files. Um, they've also recently transformed um, 
uh, to link data format uh, Marari subject headings thesaurus and I'll, there's their page that leads to that subject heading thesaurus so that's all I have. Uh, <clears throat> so we have tested what the impact will be. We have sent in the data and the analysis. I think it was about 45 pages based on the work that you did testing. There were a set of questions that the participants used. We did this in the last two weeks of February. I sent it off to the ALA Publishing, to the chair of the RDA board, and to the chair of the uh, RDA steering committee. Uh, so that we can have some influence on what the outcome will be. We made suggestions in terms, based on what the testing showed in terms of improving both the language, the impact of the 3R process, the LRM piece. We have no control of the LRM piece because the reference model is now the underpinning of RDA. So what we'll have to do is to manage that process. Judith Cannon and her staff in the coin operation will be focusing on the training that will be necessary for our staff to be able to use the uh, 3R project, uh, the, the outcome of the uh, tool after that. We have been told that once the beta version of the toolkit is solidified, then there'll be a year before there'll be the final implementation of the new toolkit. So we will be uh, working on the policy statements, the training that are necessary, and determining how we want to make this successful. And we figured that if we figure this out for the library since we have the largest cataloging operation, we will help the uh, cataloging community to move forward with this. So that's all we can tell you at the moment, but we are focusing on that quite intently. Um, we haven't, the other part of your question was how that interfaces with BibFrame and the work that we're doing, and we will see that too. Uh, Sally McCallum and her staff and Judy Cannon and her staff meet weekly now to make sure they're on the same path. So we will be coordinating whatever efforts are needed to, um, how should we say, help bend BibFrame as well as to help us with the training preparation. Does anybody want to elaborate further on that? Nobody wants to speak to that. Okay. <laughs> Other questions? Regina. Yeah. Uh, of course, it's about serials. Yes. Relating to what I think uh, one of the goals of the frame was to be able to realize fully the RDA focus on elements as opposed to records. And I keep watching and waiting for examples of deconstructing records and reshuffling them so that we can, on the fly, present the whole history of a serial or just selected elements to be clustered in different ways as a result of deconstructing right now, which is a very monolithic mark record. Has anybody that's um, seen examples from these various experiments seen this capability in action or even good provisions for this capability? I have not. Sally and colleagues, do you have any prime examples of that? And Sally, will the conversion specifications that we're working on now for converting from um, uh, mark to bit frame, will that, and bit frame to mark, will that be useful at all in this process? Will anything come out of that? That's the only area that strikes me as perhaps having some impact. Well, I don't know if it would be useful, but the, uh, the conversion from bit frame to mark. Oh, you. makes it very clear that the data models are very different and you can do things in BibFrame that you, you couldn't have done in Mark, but also you can't get into Mark so easily either. And so, uh, uh, you know, it, it hasn't all played out yet, but some of the things that you're talking about, we're all interested to see how they will, what will happen.
Okay, there are, appear to be no more questions. So with that, we thank the, today's participants for helping to show how BibFrame is penetrating the global um, stage. And stay tuned, we will do much more work here locally as well as uh, exerting influence uh, more broadly. Thank you for attending today's session.